Are there a lot of growers here in the Kootenays? Uh, there are a tremendously huge amount of growers in the Kootenays. I would say at least 60% of the residents um, in this area are um, either employ in employment with cannabis growing or are growing themselves. The Kootenays in British Columbia. This picturesque region is home to imposing mountains, glassy rivers, and a whole lot of BC bud. Some estimates put the value of the province's cannabis crop at between two and seven billion dollars annually. For decades, much of it has been grown here by small producers. But when legalization comes to Canada, they wonder, what will happen to them? Will they be allowed to operate alongside major federally licensed producers? Or will regulation and competition force to shut down or stay in the darkness? One grower, who we've agreed to call Phil, invited us on a tour of his production facility on the condition we carefully protected his identity and location. He tells us he fears prosecution and persecution, but wanted to speak out about widespread worry that when legalization arrives, growers like him will be crushed. Phil applied to become a licensed producer, but was denied. There are only 35 in Canada, and more than 400 applicants waiting to join them. Um, myself, my company that I had partners with, um, was one of the many people, many organizations that uh, were not given licenses. Um, due to basically changes in the rules that were unfair as far as I'm concerned. Phil has three designated person production licenses, which let him legally grow 294 plants and provide a trio of patients with 60 grams each day. But that's a lot of cannabis, about 180 joints. So growers like Phil sell or donate their excess harvest to dispensaries, illegally. An entire economy has grown out of this cozy arrangement. But one thing is for certain is that the biggest worry is that legalization is going to see large operators swoop in and have a negative impact on our local economy. Some worry that when legalization arrives, the federal government's licensed producer system won't keep up with demand. It's these large warehouses that I'm concerned about a quality product uh, coming from. Um, and I, I think there will be a, a market, a, a demand for a more small scale, scale artisanal cannabis product. The small growers are integral to what we do here. Um, we basically see it as a, a three point three-pronged a triangle where the patients are at the top, we are here as service providers and, the grow and we work with the small local producers hand in hand. It's more of a craft cannabis type situation we are like micro breweries, micro breweries, similar um, ideas that we produce unique um, products um, with small, like uh, on a small scale, so there's more of attention to detail and quality. Um, growing cannabis on a large scale, like the licensed producers do, I feel leads to more uh, tendency towards production problems because large grow rooms are really hard to control the environment in and control pathogens and pests and insects um, without using poisons. Police do get the odd complaint about growers. Usually it will come from a neighbor fed up with a skunky smell. We do run into the, the uh, odd complaint where people uh, kind of feel entitled by the fact that they have a Health Canada license and that it's legal to produce marijuana and that there isn't. They know that there isn't a, a stringent set of regulations or an inspection process to hold them accountable to how they, they, um, they operate their marijuana grow operations. So you, we run into those few people who don't want to, to comply to that because they feel empowered by the legislation that's in place. I would like to see there be a, pl a fair playing field between um, small scale craft cannabis growers and large scale growers. Um, and I think that uh, free market forces should be applied. I think that growers should be able to make a reputation for themselves based on the quality of their work. And that, uh, um, yeah, that should stand for something. <laughs>